Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. Today once again we cover the brutal world of Mexican drug cartels. And today's video topic, arguably more than any other video I've done along these lines, really does encapsulate the indiscriminate brutality and violence that these various drug cartels commit. Now, when it comes to covering these sort of videos, I always do my best to describe the people involved in these videos as victims. First reason being, in many of these cartel videos, we don't truly know who the victims even are. For all we know, they could be innocent people who were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And even in the videos where we know categorically that it's cartel members killing cartel members, I will still try to use the word victim when describing these videos. I think if you take the viewpoint where you say to yourself, well these guys deserved everything that was coming to them, they were cartel members themselves, and they were willing to do the same thing, so they deserve it. I get that viewpoint, I get that thought process, but I don't think it's conducive of solving the problem in which is happening in Mexico. I feel like that sort of viewpoint just perpetuates the cycle of violence which is going on right now in Mexico. And honestly, when I was first exposed to this cartel content, that's the exact same thought process I had. But as I done more research in regards to these cartels, how they recruited, how they interacted with the public, and things of that nature, I soon realised that my original viewpoint was a simplistic, naive, and quite frankly dumb way to look at this situation. And honestly that's why I chose this particular case. The case in question stems from the war between the Los Zetas and the Gulf Cartel. Now these two particular cartels engaged in brutal warfare in the early 2010s. Now this war not only resulted in multiple casualties on both sides, sadly it drastically affected the civilian population. Quite literally, hundreds of innocent people were killed at the result of the war between the Gulf Cartel and the Los Zetas. A couple of horrible examples of this were the 2010 and 2011 San Fernando massacres in Tamaulipas. The 2010 San Fernando massacre consisted of the execution of 72 migrants from Central and South America. The migrants were travelling in buses through Mexico on their way to the United States. At this point, they were intercepted by Los Zetas gunmen. They were then subsequently taken to a nearby ranch. Allegedly, they was offered the opportunity to work for the Los Zetas. The migrants however turned this offer down, and subsequently, they were executed by gunshots. Apparently, they were told to lay face down against a wall, and if they obeyed their commands, they wouldn't be killed. However, the cartel gunmen opened fire and executed the migrants. One man by the name of Luis actually managed to survive. He was shot, but he played dead. Eventually, the cartel members left the ranch, and Luis made a break for it. He walked into the night until he found help. Apparently, the migrants were killed, due to the Los Zetas fearing that they would be recruited by the Gulf Cartel, who they were at war with. That then takes us to the 2011 San Fernando Massacre, and this story is absolutely horrific. Thank God there's no videos surrounding this case. The 2011 San Fernando Massacre involved the brutal murders of 193 people. Unlike the 2010 massacre, the majority of the victims in the 2011 massacre were Mexican nationals. Much like the 2010 massacres, essentially the Los Zetas hijacked numerous buses on the Mexican Federal Highway 101 in San Fernando. Allegedly, it was the Los Zetas high up Miguel Trevino Morales who ordered these hijackings. Once the coaches were hijacked, they were driven deep into the Mexican countryside in Tamaulipas, in the middle of nowhere. Nobody would hear their screams. Once the buses reached their destination, essentially the Los Zetas gunmen separated the passengers into different categories. Able-bodied and fighting-aged men were essentially put into pairs, and they were ordered to fight each other to the death. 
The Zetas gave them melee weapons such as hammers, knives, crowbars and metal bars and the winner would then be recruited into the Los Zetas, the loser obviously dying. But honestly, it wasn't a game worth winning. The winners were then essentially assigned suicide missions. They were ordered to go into enemy territory and kill as many rivals as they could, but they were outgunned, outnumbered, and it's presumed that all of these guys died. Now allegedly, Miguel Trevino Morales was there during these coach hijackings. Apparently, one of the men pleaded with Miguel Trevino Morales to let him live. He told Miguel he would give the Zetas his house, his money, and his possessions if they spared him his life. Apparently, Miguel agreed and told the man to go away. When the man turned around and started walking, Miguel hit him on the back of the head with a blunt object and he proceeded to beat his head into mush. The elderly and the weak were also separated and then executed. When it came to the women and children, allegedly the Los Aitas separated the women in order of attractiveness. Those who they deemed unattractive were pretty much instantly killed and those that they deemed attractive they would keep alive allegedly for a few days and essentially continuously fear them essentially until they were bored and then they would execute them. They also killed the children, allegedly putting their remains in acid barrels. In fact, there were even rumours that they put infants in these acid barrels while they were still alive. It doesn't even bear thinking about. Eventually, 173 bodies relating to the massacre were found in numerous mass graves. According to reports, numerous bodies had signs of blunt force trauma. So a total of 173 bodies were found, but it's believed that many more people were killed in this massacre. And again, according to Los Aitas members who were arrested after this incident, apparently the motive was that the people who were killed during this massacre all had allegiances to the Gulf Cartel. Now, I find that very hard to believe. I personally believe there's much more to this case than meets the eye, much like the case of the missing Mexican students, but I guess that's a video topic in itself. Ultimately, there are so many theories and so much information out there in relation to the 2011 San Fernando Massacre. If you get a chance, try to do a bit of research on it. It's a really tragic case. So in short, the war between the Los Aitas and the Gulf Cartel resulted in many civilian casualties. And that kind of brings us to the video in question. The video in question depicts the execution of five alleged Los Aitas members by the Gulf Cartel. Two of the victims were female and the other three were men. Now, the reason behind these executions was essentially for revenge over the Los Aitas killing a group of innocent people. Now the story is, Los Aitas high up Ricardo Santilan organised the kidnap and killing of a group of people. The Zetas suspected that the group were members of the Gulf Cartel. However, as time passed, the Zetas realised that this group were not affiliated with any criminal organisations. Knowing this, the Zetas could have let the group live, but they decided to kill them anyway. Shortly after, the Gulf Cartel found out about this and decided to avenge the innocent people who were murdered. That is what birthed this video. But nevertheless, how does the video play out? The video opens at night time in the middle of nowhere. Five suspected Los Aitas members are blindfolded. They are on their knees. The men have their hands tied behind their backs. However, the women's hands have not been tied. The women are also completely naked. The alleged Zetas are surrounded by axe and machete wielding Gulf Cartel members. The video is around five and a half minutes long. The first minute being your standard cartel video introduction where a member of the Gulf Cartel reads out a short statement. Nothing particularly interesting was mentioned here. Once the statement has been read out, the executions then start. Knowing what they're about to endure, a couple of members of the group let out cries of terror. The executions then start, and they are basically all executed at the same time. The man closest to the left has his throat slit, 
until he drops to the ground. One of the other men and one of the women are killed instantly with hard axe blows to the neck. The other woman was laid on the ground on her front and had her neck hacked away at by a machete until she was decapitated. And the last man, it appears that he was stabbed in the neck. He then drops to the ground and a few seconds later, one of the axe wielding cartel members starts swinging it at his neck. Once the executions had been completed, you then basically see clips of them going through the dismemberment process. You see them use an axe to decapitate some of the dead bodies. You see them hack limbs off with machetes. And in the background, there is a barrel with hot coals underneath and the barrel is steaming. I'm assuming it's got boiling water in it. So they would essentially dismember body parts and then put the body parts in the boiling water. Now, where I saw this video, the title indicated that it was acid, but I don't think that's the case. You can see hot coals under the barrel, and in my opinion, more than likely, it was boiling water. But you see the cartel members dismember the bodies and put their body parts into the barrel. Although the quality of filming is pretty bad, uh, you do get a couple of close-ups of the dismemberment process. So, for example, there was a segment where they were hacking away at one of the victim's legs with an axe and they got to the point where the leg was only being held together by the slightest strand of skin and flesh. They tried to pull the leg off from there, but they couldn't, so they finished the job with one more axe blow and off came the leg. Those are the sort of close-ups that they were showing in this video. As the process continued, you could see that the barrel in the background was filling with body parts. During the dismemberment portion, the cameraman actually reads out a message, and he says the following, This is a message for you, Ricardo Santillan. Although you hide and cover your face, the same goes for El Polo and the motherfuckers who participated in the murdering of innocents. That's the only reason you're scared, posing as the army, deceiving to the people and to the authorities. I have a list, and I have written, for example, Homero Trevos, civil defense commander who gives notices of the tactical movements of Sedena, the Mexican army. That is the final statement that was read out. Now, I'm not sure what he's referring to when he mentions Homero Trevos. I'm assuming that Homero maybe was feeding information to the Los Aters and that the Gulf Cartel were aware of this. That's what I'm assuming anyway, but I'm not entirely sure. But ultimately, it's another really brutal video Again, allegedly, this was the Gulf Cartel avenging innocent people who the Los Aters killed, and I have no doubt that the Los Aters did what they were accused of because the Zetas in their day were arguably the most brutal cartel Mexico and the world has ever seen. Having said that, more than likely this was just a propaganda piece by the Gulf Cartel trying to appease the people and make them think that they are on their side, when in reality, all of these cartels to some extent mess with innocent civilians and drag them into a brutal world in which they don't want to be part of. So yeah, ultimately when these cartels try to take the moral high ground, it's really just propaganda at the end of the day, but a brutal video nonetheless. I do apologize that I've been rambling in this video. I've kind of gone topic to topic and it's been a bit scatterbrained, so sorry about that. But I just feel these topics perfectly encapsulates that it's not just cartel members killing cartel members. Many innocent civilians have had their lives turned upside down by what has gone on and what is still currently going on in Mexico, Central America, and South America. But yeah, I hope you found this video interesting and I hope you enjoyed it. If you can enjoy this sort of content, and once again, thank you guys for the support. We are nearly at 150,000 subscribers, which is incredibly overwhelming. At the end of the day, I'm just some guy who barely has any time. I've got a full-time job. I don't have the best editing skills. I don't, I don't write scripts or anything like that. But for some reason, this channel has blown up and it's down to you guys. So I wanted to thank you guys for showing me all of the support that you have, for encouraging me throughout this journey. Some of you guys have got in touch and suggested cases. Some of you guys have even helped me 
with these videos such as translations and things like that so it's greatly appreciated and honestly it's really humbling that there's people out there that are willing to take time out of their day to help me with such videos that is incredibly humbling especially considering I'm not exactly a, a whiz when it comes to video editing recording and things like that it's really crazy so yeah thank you guys very much I do promise before Christmas I will do a Q&A live stream just, just a simple Q&A live stream and after that in the new year I hope to be streaming on a semi-regular occurrence on this channel maybe just shooting the shit playing some crappy horror games and just having a laugh that sort of thing but um yeah hopefully you enjoyed this video as always stay safe and I'll catch you on the next one.